In this demonstration, we're going to walk through some of Windchill's component management capabilities. To start, we'll open up the Classification Explorer. Windchill Parts Classification allows you to classify your parts based on attributes to promote reuse and reduce inventory in your system. On the left, we have the top level classification categories. To use the Explorer, if we want to find a mechanical component, we can open up that category and can see all the different types of components that are classified in that mechanical class. In this case, I might be coming in as someone who's not even sure if a part exists. I don't know a part number, I don't know a name, but I can use the Classification Explorer to find out whether or not it's something we have and whether or not it's something that we can make use of. In this case, let's say I'm looking for a rivet. I open up Mechanical Components, I go into the Rivets class, and then in here are all of the different rivets that I currently have in my windshell system. These are going to each have unique attributes, different values you can see on the left for material, for head type, and so on, as well as sourcing and purchasing information. So in this case, maybe I don't want to search through all of my rivets manually. I can filter rivets just like we're shopping for parts. There's even a unique attribute for mass which is driven by an integration that we have with ANSYS Granta to provide material information for these components, which is a nice benefit of Windchill's open architecture. Checking their sourcing status, there's only two that have a preferred supplier. And scrolling to the right, I can see their other attributes like metadata, diameter, material thickness, and even a parts classification breadcrumb trail. Let's take a look at the tough lock rivet. Opening that up on the details page, I can see all of the general information for this classified component. Starting with the Granta information, that open architecture lets us plug rich sources of data like ANSYS Granta into Windchill and puts it into the hands of designers and engineers so they can make more informed decisions every day through Windchill. That information includes raw performance data for materials, but also extends into sustainability and recyclability. 80% of a product's environmental impact is determined during the design phase, so we need the information here and now to make the best decisions. Below the granted information is the part classification attributes and values, individual values for diameter, material thickness, length, and so on. This rivet, along with a lot of the components that we've classified, are parts that we're going to be buying from suppliers rather than making ourselves. In order to see that information, we go to our AML AVL tab, and this is where we can find the suppliers for this component. So in Americas, I'm going to buy these parts from Acme Fasteners, and the vendor is McMaster Car. However, if I look at a different region, if I'm someone from Asia Pacific, well, I can only get it from Acme. If I'm someone from Europe, who do I get it from? Fastenal. These suppliers could differ depending on the location of a company's building, plant, or warehouse. In Winchell, we document that, so no matter who's looking to purchase the part, they'll know the correct supplier for that part, given their location. Once we understand where the part would be coming from, where in Winchell is it now being used? Is it something that's already being used on other products or assemblies? We can take a look and see that this rivet is used on a snowmobile product in different variations of the hood. Let's go ahead and open up the hood and see what that entails. The hood is an assembly that has a combination of mechanical and electrical components, primarily around the infotainment system for the snowmobile. If we take a look at this message center, this is an assembly that is a good example of a part completely built out of components that we're buying rather than making ourselves. What you can see here when we open this up is not just the bill of material, but also states and sourcing statuses, so I know which one of these parts actually have suppliers in place. The majority of these ones do. And then if we show the manufacturer vendor information, not just can we see do we have a supplier, but who the suppliers are, all included in this bill of information. Grabbing a random part, this capacitor, since it's used 128 times here, let's open that up and look at the manufacturing and vendor information here. This one is unique because it's not just one supplier that we can get this from. There's actually two suppliers. And if we go to this tab, it gives us visibility not just into who those suppliers are, but which ones do we prefer to work with? What is their manufacturer organization ID for their cage code? 
or for their manufacturer part number. And then we can take it a step further and beyond just seeing who we're getting it from, we get visibility into the full picture of all the parts we're actually getting from them. In this case, nine different parts from Texas Instruments. So maybe now we know whenever we go to make a new product or search for any of these components, we might just want to use something they're providing for us since we know that they're a preferred supplier. Being an electronic component, we can use Silicon Expert to evaluate risk based on life cycle, sourcing, compliance, and inventory. Whenever we open this, the first thing we see is the Silicon Expert report on the PCB build material. This looks at the overall build material and tells us which parts are matched in the database. For this build of material of 40 total parts, 31 of them are matched. And we can see all kinds of additional information on all of those matched parts, including a bill of material grade, which in this case is a C, indicating there are parts of this bill of material that carry moderate to high risk. In the chart below, you can see the silicon expert part number, wind chill part number, manufacturer, description, risk grade, and crosses. Crosses being similar parts that are searchable and reusable from the silicon expert database. This looks at a variety of variables such as reach, rows, country of origin, and so on. It also shows the risk level. So in most cases, I would obviously want to choose something with a lower risk rather than a higher risk. And I also can look at the inventory of this and determine the best components to purchase based on budget. They have an average price. There's a minimum price. This will vary over time depending on availability. And then I can even take all of this information and download a PDF report of it. So this is looking at it offline. It's grabbing the whole bill of material, including all of the information that I can see here in Windchill, and putting it in a PDF format we can send off to any other users who would be interested in looking at it. And then finally, looking at the research tab, we can go ahead and search the entire Silicon Expert database to find any parts that we're looking for. Thank you for taking a look at this Windchill component management demo.